Alright guys, how's going back again today? Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. The $20,000 CDL Warzone Tourney goes down last night. Plenty of drama in this one, rather fitting in a way that two of the best Destiny players of this most recent season get the job done and win the entire thing. But also some interesting words between Ghosty and Shotzi that I can't quite figure out what's behind this. Very much on Twitter, your perspective in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. The first big update of the day is this from David Vonderhaar and Treyarch. I believe this is what Pro Reborn was discussing a few days ago where he said that there's going to be a crazy revelation in the COD scene. I think he was overreacting it a little bit, to be honest, but this is still a very big deal. David Von der Hart, legend of Trek, of course. After 18 years and eight Call of Duty titles, he's moving on from Trek and gives the following announcements here on LinkedIn. Today I'm sharing that I've left Activision and Trek after an incredible eight years. To my co-workers, immensely grateful. And um, that's the statement he comes out with. Legend, of course. Now, look, this guy, especially during Black Ops 2, I remember the amount of hate he used to get because Black Ops 2 now is well loved, but at the time when they made changes like nerfing the DSR and stuff like this, Von Ar was getting death threats, like it was wild. He's seen the ups and downs of it, but um, man, Treg have always been the studio from the competitive perspective that has led the way on that side, and Von Ar has always been one of the key figures behind it. I think we saw last year, or maybe earlier this year, Tony Flame, another legend at Treg, actually decided to step away as well. You've got to wonder why some of this is happening. I will say that I thought Von der had stepped away years ago at this point. I thought we even heard stories before, like, Carl War that Von der was stepping down, or he was less involved in the day-to-day -day running of Treyarch and the development of the COD titles. But, um, I think he's still kind of stayed on, and maybe has done some things, but I don't believe he's been quite as involved in the last few years as he was, let's say, for Black Ops 2 and the early Black Ops series games. So, um, you know, I don't think this is going to make a major difference to how Treyarch are operating, and certainly Von der and guys like Tony Flame have instilled their philosophy philosophy at track for many of the past few years. But nonetheless, Tony Flame, I met him, I think, at the first ever event I went to outside of the UK in Anaheim 2019. I was meant to, like, commentate the amateur bracket that tournament, but it didn't happen for various reasons. But I still had, like, a pass to go and get food and stuff like this at the venue. So, um, as if I was actually gonna, you know, be a member of the talent, I guess. So, Tony Flame was in there one day, and I was like, damn, I know this guy, and I was talking with him, and I hold shift and all this. And I thought it was so cool that Tony Flame, okay, yes, it was Anaheim, probably their offices are relatively local, but he'd come out there to the event for the Championship Sunday just to see it was Black Ops 4 that game, right, be played on that high level, and that was really the general feeling you got from Treyarch, that they loved seeing their game getting played by the best players in the world, a feeling you don't necessarily get from other studios, and a lot of that was um, inspired by, I think, Von der himself, so to see Tony Flame leave, now to see Von der leave, it does raise questions as to what Treyarch's going to look like going forward, especially when there's been rumours going around that they are getting worked to the bone, as I'm sure all the studios under Activision do. That's how developers seem to be working nowadays, unfortunately. But um, Trek especially, because they've got to make the games and they've got to prop up Infinity Ward's disastrous games with, uh, you know, doing the entire ranked play mode because IW don't seem to know how to do it. And this is, you know, what Trek have been doing. So they've been working hard, no doubt. And maybe that's one of the reasons why we see Von der Haar and Tony Flame and others step away. Does raise questions as to whether for their next title, it's going to be quite what it could be when they're at real full force as they were several years ago producing games like this. I mean, he was even around before the original Black Ops 1, of course. But, um, I mean, yeah, legendary COD titles. And I think that for many of us in the community, images like this will um, live on in the memory because during season, this is Black Ops 3, of course, but during seasons where um, there was questions about the way the CWL was being run and the investment and teams struggling and obviously back in the CWL days, pre-CDL, Used to get a lot of dodgy organizations would come around. There was loads of questions about the way the esports world was going. And then we'd go into like an Infinity Ward game and they wouldn't have ranked play. And it was like, oh no. But you could always rely on Von der Haar and Treyarch to care about the competitive scene. Make a good title that was um, actually going to play well for pubs and for competitive matches. And they actually cared, right? I mean, look, Von der Haar turning up to the event here to congratulate the Optic Dynasty on the championship they won. Possibly this was Anaheim. I can't exactly remember. But it is a shame to see his departure of a short. I don't know what's next for Von der Haar. It'll be interesting to see if he goes on to join another project, which could be somewhat adjacent in some way, because, you know, he knows how to build a good first-person shooter as far as I'm concerned. Let's talk about this $20,000 CDL Warzone 20 last night. These were the eight teams that were formed. The big name teams, Shotzi, Blast, Selly, and Biffle, they pretty much combined the two 2v2 teams from the other day. You had Simpanelli on a team, you had Envoy, Shifty, Tubak, and I believe, and then you had these four teams with, um, what, the eventual champion 
champions will get into Aiden, Rated, Draza and Abizi with Capstall on a team with Nero. Ghosty also had a team with Asim, Symphony and FIFA Killer. We'll get to that in a second because there's definitely some interesting words being exchanged there we'll get into. This was the way the bracket shaped out here. So of course it's Modern Warfare 2, it's not throwback but it is what it is. At least the Seed Yellow putting in some time and money and effort to actually run some sort of off-season tournament here. I know that Simp said after the tournament like damn that was good fun. Let's run it back some other time. And there were loads of highlight moments in this tournament which is um, not exactly a surprise but nonetheless it is good to see that there was a lot going on. Nero first of all I do wonder for you guys like do you think the MP7 didn't get the love that maybe it should have done during the season because the MP7 was I remember Shotzi used to run around with it sometimes in ranked play and stuff and um, it definitely should have been pretty viable. Okay it's not as good as their Vaznev for sure but um, it shouldn't have been too far away theoretically as far as I'm concerned and uh, well here he is with a nice little 1v4 here Nero. Pretty disgusting one of that to be fair with the MP7 in hand so yeah it's his MP7 cheese but um, maybe a, a weapon that we could have had being slightly more viable during the regular season that it actually turned out to be. Intrigued to your thoughts on that in the comment section below. We also had Rated playing again and watching Rated play is always good fun. This guy has always been one of the players, European COD Pro of course for many years. He was in the CDL during the London Royal Ravens days. He got, I think they made roster changes probably just because the meta went to four SMGs and they couldn't really accommodate Rated on the roster when they had like Wusk in there as well and stuff as their main AR. So um, Rated was obviously dropped to that particular position but even pre-CDL was a great player and he's really good at like every game he plays. I'm pretty sure he started playing CSGO and was global within like a few weeks. Like just one of these really talented guys or whatever game he plays. He's obviously won some decent money playing Warzone over the last couple of years but definitely has the itch to play competitive again and um, he was making some serious plays here on Abizi's team with uh, Draza, Abizi and Rated and of course um, Aiden right to close out the squad. So yeah I mean what's some nice plays there from Rated no doubt about it and uh, he actually took down Shotzi and Selium's team and made some interesting statements on the batter as well. So good entertainment. I know that Rated will say, oh, you know, I want to come back to competing and stuff like this, but it's just so difficult to actually make that happen, right? Even if Rated is good enough to be in the league, and he honestly might be, like, I think it's not out of the realms of possibility that he's still got the talent for it you know, connections. It's just not going to happen, is it? So it's just the, the way of things as it presently stands. But he can play in these throwback tourneys, which is definitely always a good time. Now, Schultze was playing against Draza's team eventually. Draza's team took them down, I believe, in this tournament because, well, they made the finals and Schultze's team didn't. But I do want to mention these uh, words exchanged between Ghosty and Schultze. I'm not exactly sure what's behind this or how to explain this, but um, I did want to mention it for sure. So this clip, first of all, I mean, look at Draza gets absolutely bodied here by Shotzi, which is just, you know, movement on point as usual. And Shotzi's team eventually went out of the tournament to a 1v1 between Blast and Shifty. We know all the trash talk right between Shifty and Blast the other day when he was saying, um, you know, that's basically why you're an ex-CDL pro, stuff like this, or that's why I can't find any highlights of you from the CDL because you're terrible. And we saw that beef that happened a couple of days ago. They find themselves in a one versus one for the game. And um, Blast just completely, I mean, the way he plays this, it's always a difficult spot when you're in this position. Issue, right, but he doesn't want to chase, and the way Blast plays it, I think is pretty weak to be fair because um, Shifty's just having his way with him, to be honest, just running around all over the shop and then just talking trash after the fact as well. After, um, yeah, he doesn't chase him down, he throws the nays, Blast then gets off the bomb. I don't know, it's difficult to play those spots, but still, he was getting roasted for the way that Blast played that to uh, effectively get Shotzi's team knocked straight out of the tournament. So, there's that clip that I'll share, and I'll also share the words between Ghosty and Shotzi. Bomb at Alpha. 10 seconds. What the hell? Who the hell is this guy? Oh, let's go! Oh baby. my god! Oh, you shit. You oh, suck, blast! You are oh, shit. dog shit! You, you are name, dog bro. shit! One v one for the tournament. You are nervous. You are. Nervous. Christ. That Dude, is why that you is are an ex CDL pro. Ex CDL pro. <laughs> oh my yeah, god. Yeah, let's, let's go, baby. Oh Come on. My god. Yeah. Yo, Dan, what, what map do you guys <laughs> vetoing? Do we know map? Oh, we have to veto map. Veto? We're oh. vetoing? Yeah. Uh, uh, let me let me consult with my, uh, you know, uh, what, what's the word? Acquaintances. Wait, no, friends. Uh, teammates. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Okay, bet. All right, yeah, what map are you vetoing, boys? Um. Okay, so like, listen, hear me out. Are we a close or long range team? And do long range? 
Okay, okay. We're, we're going to veto Fortress. So what exactly did Ghosty mean by those words? They're playing a matchup, right? Shotzi and Ghosty, like there was even this interesting moment here where Shotzi tried to challenge that he gets absolutely destroyed by his former teammate, right? Now, we know that Ghosty has been dropped by Optic. They've got Kenny in instead. There's questions as to whether Ghosty was still a better fit there. I personally think the Kenny change is going to take them in a positive direction. Ghosty's still young, lots to learn. And, uh, you know, he's probably going to go to Los Angeles Thieves, as is our current understanding. But when Shotzi says, hey, like, like, uh, what are you going to veto, guys? Uh, what maps do you want to play for this series? He says, oh, let me ask my acquaintances. Oh, sorry, my friends. Oh, sorry, my teammates. Or something like that. And I thought it was a little bit strange. And I don't know if... Um, it seems like he said that deliberately because he was talking to Shotzi. Now, the implication... The obvious implication would be that maybe he's describing how... Optic didn't necessarily feel like that to Ghosty when he was on that team. That's the rumor that happened shortly after the World Championship that especially Dashy, we don't really know about the rest of the team, but it didn't seem like there was ever a thought that Optic were going to keep Ghosty around because, you know, they dropped him quite quickly when they made the decisions. It's been quite clear that they were going to get an alternative ideally Adraza from their perspective, right? They couldn't get him. They got Kenny. They probably would have got Sib or Priest or someone else. They didn't want to get Ghosty back, right? And we believe that was because, you know, Dashy and Ghosty didn't really get on so well at the end of the season, even in that podcast, the game chat they did where Dashy said that there were all these excuses flying around and kind of pointing the finger at Ghosty for how some of that stuff was handled. So I kind of get it. And Ghosty, I'm sure, wants to get revenge on these guys next season for making such a decision. But um, yeah, just the way he said that almost makes it sound like he was... um you know, throwing some sort of accusation the way of Shotzi in terms of that he wasn't necessarily getting treated like a teammate or a friend, more like an acquaintance or something. I don't know. That's kind of like the only thing that I can really think of. You guys might have a better explanation in the comments below, or it's just nothing and Ghosty's just saying it for no good reason, but I don't really understand exactly where that's come from. So um, there might be something in that, let's just say. And Optic versus uh, Thieves, if it is Ghosty next season, is going to be very exciting, despite the fact that Thieves on paper aren't as good as they have been for the last couple of of seasons based on our current understanding of the team they are forming as Ghosty also says our team in the wars and Tony today the lights are brighter than expected so kind of um, not exactly throwing his teammates under the bus here but yeah I mean he includes himself in this as well our team but nonetheless there's uh, possibly more to come from Ghosty going forwards so the finals goes down and the final turned out to be the team with Tupac and co with Envoy on the team which is um look no surprise that Tupac Thug Lord of the boys are in the grand finals that's how it goes teammates with a BZ for a long time of course phases search and destroy and and this was a disgusting 1v3 here from Rated. There were lots of disgusting 1v3s and some great highlights. But have a look at this. I mean, Rated drops down, goes for the wall bang as well. I don't think he's hacking or anything, right? This is a pretty common wall bang spot. And then he flies around the corner and absolutely guns Tupac off the couch there and gets the defuse. I mean, wow, that was disgusting. And um, there was a few other ones as well. This same map, to be fair, or like uh, at least both on LSELO, we get a BZ with a 1v3 situation here to tie it up at 1 1. So these guys are just getting clutched on all sides series long. Okay, fair enough. The first kill the guy was planting the bomb, but um, I mean, in this situation, Abizi should not be winning that gunfight against Tupac, but he does somehow win it and clutches the 1v1 as well. So there was lots of highlights here. It would have been nice to see this played on non-MW2, to be honest, but um, I think it was quite fitting in a way, because during the entire season, Abizi was an absolute monster in Search and Destroy, as was Draza, of course, let's not forget, on the Los Angeles Thieves. And another very similar clutch here from Draza, another 1v3 three to close out the series. He gets the second kill on Envoy there. And this final kill was ridiculous to be fair. Nice play here from Draza. Fakes the draw opening. Runs back. You gotta wonder as well yeah, who's going to beat this phase team next year in Search and Destroy? Now, okay, they had Slasher before, and that's a big advantage. But now they've got Draza, and, I mean, yeah, that phase team of Simp. I mean, look at this kill. How quickly Tubug was dying in some crazy ways. I'm not going to lie during the uh, the way that concluded. And, um, yeah, Draza, week two, CDL Warzone champs, 2,500 each. Maybe next time, Dilly Boy, he says now. Because it's kind of funny how Draza and Envoy and Kenny, they've all split up onto their separate teams. And he takes down Envoy in the finals and already is uh, throwing a little bit of shade here. His way and Envoy's like um yeah added that to the bookmark so gonna be some good rivalries in the off season and when next season begins but congrats to these guys of course for getting the job done but as I'm saying right that phase team is going to be hard to stop in Search and Destroy. There's no doubt about it. They were great last year with Sasha, one of the best Search and Destroy teams we've ever seen. It broke the Search and Destroy win record, of course. And now they've got Draza as well, one of the best S&D players, hands down, from the most recent season. 
it's going to be a tough team to beat. Now, yes, FaZe and, um, you know, Optic, of course, and Toronto and New York and all these other teams are going to be great at Session Destroy, as will probably Boston be. But, I mean, still, on paper, that team is going to be very hard to stop in that particular game mode. But very much on Twitter, your perspective in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. And I'll see you next time.